Oh man, we're back, man. We got the famous man, the 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 crazy, the the comedian, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the 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 genius, the troll, the marketer, Charleston White. Oh, uh, in, in the in the rat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to put him in the rat category too. Now, don't forget about Rat Williams. You can't forget about Rat Williams. Rat Williams, man. You know it's funny because when we post you on Say Cheese and I tag you, and, and man, your shit shot up. What you had like hundred ten thousand followers now? Yeah. Yeah. I, I told you to change, don't put Charleston White because they was going to keep snatching it. Yeah. And then and then somebody else said, hey, uh, start spending money with Instagram. So I've been yep. spending money with them. So they stopped, So they took me off their shadow ban list. Yep. That's how that works. Yeah. I started spending money with them. So they took me off their shadow ban list. That's how it works, man. Uh, I'm on mine too. I'm going to be good this time. Yeah. Cause I'm going to play I noticed- well with others. Cause I, I noticed you post a lot of your old Facebook posts on there. Yeah. And you know, use the N word a lot. Uh, use a lot of different, you know, foul language, and that's how, to me, I think that's why your shit used to get took. Uh, well, every time I got into it with a celebrity, uh, every time I got into it with a celebrity, they know people. We didn't. We don't know on this side of the camera that you have Facebook. You have Instagram, you have Twitter, then you have Metaverse, right? So all of these people, if they get mad at you, if, 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 if a celebrity calls them and say, hey, let me pay you $5,000 to shut this account down, you get shut down like that. So mm-hmm. it wasn't until I got into it with T.I. and Boosie, when my account got shut down, I finally got introduced to the Metaverse people. So I actually got somebody number from the metaverse world who at first they said, man, they got a lot of restrictions and hits on your account. He said, but I can take them off. Once he went to looking at my account, he said, man, they got a lot on your account. So he said, man, it's going to cost you anywhere from about five thousand dollars and I can get your account back with that five thousand dollars. I can get your account back and I can get it to where they never do it again. This is a guy that's working in metaverse. So when Elon Musk, when he bought Twitter and he started exposing information that they're selling blue checks, it's the same thing with Instagram. Absolutely. So, I, so this, is why I fu- this is why I don't like celebrities. This is why I don't like these niggas like these rappers. They are the new overseer, homie. So meaning they can oppress me because they're in a position to reach the metaverse to call somebody inside of Instagram. So that's what happened to Charleston White. When I make celebrities mad, they can crush me because they know somebody they can call on the inside, right? We don't know that, homie. So this is what I'm telling regular people. Your celebrities are the new slave masters. They are the new white boy with the whip saying, say, pick more cotton, nigga. So they the new slave, they the new overseers, homie. Wait, so, what, what, who do you think ratted you out? What, what celebrity got mad and, and went and snitched on you to get your shit deleted? Oh uh, well, it, it, it first started when DMX died. So I I, 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 I pissed off a lot of people in the industry when I first started disrespecting Nipsey Hussle. So it started there. Uh, when I got into it with Wack 100 and Big U, they was over at World Star. It started there. Uh, uh. What was another celebrity I got into it with? Uh, it, it I was even obvious, remember the, I was remember the Johnny, I got into the Johnny Dang Boy. shit. The Who? Johnny Dang shit. You, yeah, got, the, you got, yeah, the, the Johnny, Johnny Dang When shit. I got into it with the Johnny Dang. So, yeah. uh, so the Asians run YouTube. So then I met some people prior to seeing the, the, the 60 minute Dateline study, how you can buy views. I've been on the internet for four years, homie, going viral. I've never bought a view. I've never bought a like. I've never bought uh, 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 followers or subscribers. I start realizing that they can buy followers, right? They can, they can buy followers, right? So when I realized that, I say they can, they manipulating us, homie. So somebody like me who don't have the knowledge of the internet who gets on here, that's why it was so easy to shadow ban me. That's why it's so easy to delete my accounts. I, I've had over 10 Instagram accounts deleted in, in 24 months, I've, I've lost, over, I've lost, and, and each one gets deleted at 100,000. So once I reach 100,000, they delete it. Uh, I've had 
three Instagram accounts deleted. I've had two demonetized. Mm. Uh, I've lost over eight Facebook pages in the last 24 months. Yeah. Uh, so they, they just delete them. When I appeal, I never hear nothing back from on the appeal. I understand that this is my intellectual property that they're taking. So by law, by law, they're violating a lot of rights. But I, I can't. There's no lawyer that's going to take on these big ticks. On top of that, you have people who are friendly, who, who are industry friendly, who work in these in, in these social media platforms. They're industry friendly. They're fans of these people. So they, too, can be bought and persuaded to silence you if you speak the wrong political message. So, uh. That's why I don't follow no social media rules. I don't give a damn about losing a social media page. Mm. When I saw the movie Dolomite, uh, everything that I'm doing, Dolomite was doing and saying in the 70s. Even from R-A-P-E, you know, the Caucasian women, even from that standpoint, he, even, he acted it out in movies. So I'm mimicking that same satire comedy, right? So... What I saw in the movie Dolomite, what he done in real life, he was at a show. They wouldn't let certain people in because the show was sold out for whatever reason. He went outside and performed on the streets, on the corner, and sold out the show on the corner. So I had to figure out a way to, because I see that they erase me. They, they delete me. They censor me. They silence me. Uh, so I had to figure out a way to transcend what I'm doing on the Internet in real life and monetize it as well because uh as of as of may 2020 i haven't now june of 2020 i haven't made one dollar from a social media platform mm. damn so all my money's been coming in interviews or uh, shows or uh, or uh, features on songs or uh, or uh, or uh, uh, a, a contract, a, 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 an exclusive deal that I signed with the weed spot. So I get a nice uh, royalty check uh, uh, annually for that. Uh, I had to figure out a way to take my voice because TikTok won't pay me. Uh, Instagram won't pay me. YouTube won't pay me. Facebook won't pay me. Google won't pay me. Uh, so I had to figure out a way. So since they won't pay me, I took those same voices, those same videos, and, and registered them with BMI and, and ASCAP. So I get a publishing check now. Speaking of that, uh, you said that you mimic Dolomite, and you say that a lot. That's not something you keep a secret. Um, recently, well, today, Hassan Campbell came out saying that uh, you you stole his style. Oh, uh, I, I don't I don't I don't know what's his style, uh, because he's not going to comedy. Uh, my whole goal from the time I started was Dolomite, uh, and figuring out how how to how to take the character to a stage or a movie. That's been my whole my whole get up from the time I started out. Uh, I don't know what's his style. Uh, he seemed like an angry man that's still affected by his childhood molestation. Mm. Uh, he, he attacks people online. Uh, I bullshit online. Uh, none of this is personal. Uh, I do real community work blended in with the character. Uh, he does no community work. Uh, I talk about R-A-P-E. He don't talk about that. Uh, I talk about doing things to... Uh, other races. He don't talk about that. Uh, uh, I make it available where I can run into it with rappers. He don't do that. So uh, there's no way I can mimic his style when I go live in real life. I haven't changed from the time I got from Facebook to here. I'm still in the car going live. Uh, you, you, you never hear me say like, share, subscribe, follow. You've never heard me say that. You never see me post my cash out. I'm trying to bypass the internet, my nigga, and get to a stage and on a big screen with this character. So they're stuck on the internet. I'm playing past it because I can't make no money here. <laughs> I mean, I could tell, because at the beginning, you and Hassan Campbell, y'all had a decent relationship, right? Yeah. Where did that go south at? Like, when did uh, all that shit fall apart? Uh, I started inviting him to come do community work with us. Uh, because he's too opinionated not to have any work behind him. Uh, I watch him tear down people. That ain't my game. Uh, uh, my game is to provoke thoughts. Uh, in the process of tearing you down, uh, I'm going to go back in, in, in some rare 
and build back up. Uh, when he, I called him one day when he got into it with Mama Duck. I had Infomize say, say, man, call her son Campbell home. I got a good idea that I think uh, will make people look at him in a different light. And we can really do this in silence. I said, say, homie, I've been paying Mama Duck car note. Uh, she just hit me. And, 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 and she, uh, she's behind like something. And I said, man, let's pay the whole thing. He agreed to do it. He agreed to do it. And, and no, I never spoke on this, never said nothing about it. He, he agreed to do it, man. And then when it was time to pay, he was a no call, no show. So I lost respect for him then because he agreed to do it with me, Infomar. And I went back and told that lady, yes, man, he go do it. And he's doing this to extend an olive branch for the disrespect that he did. So he was a no call, no show. So then I invited him to come do some events uh, to come talk with these young killers who've been molested. Because I, I, I partner, and I'm gonna say this, this, this attorney's name, attorney Mitch Nolte out of Collin County, McKinney, Texas, one of the best capital murder death penalty lawyers in Texas, in Texas. Uh, Shannon Ross, a criminal defense mitigation specialist, works on a multitude of capital murder and death penalty cases, as well as violent crimes for young black males or even white males, Hispanic males, are going to be sentenced to a lengthy time in prison. So partnering with them and, and working on, on certain cases with these youth, I saw, I saw a similarity. Even, even when you look at people who've gotten a death penalty, there's a similarity. Most of them have been sexually molested. Man, when you go to looking at the background of these killers and, and the ones with the violent past, that violence comes from either physical abuse or sexual abuse that, they, that they're harboring. So I reach out to her son, homie. This nigga, man, homie, this was one of them phone calls he crying on the phone because he frustrated from the attacks. And I'm saying, say, homie, you can bypass all that. Come to Texas, nigga. You safe here. You ain't got to worry about nothing. Man, we in the schools, homie, me. Man, but my idea was to get him and come connect with these young niggas' pain, my nigga, through what he know they done been through. And so he kept saying, yeah, I'm going to do it. And he never did it. So I started saying, man, that nigga really a fraud. He really just talking. He, he really just talking. So when, when, when me and T.I.'s son got into it, and he spoke on it as if I was wrong, uh, yeah, nigga, you just talking. Yeah, so uh, I really see a sucker. Uh, I thought he was genuine in, in, in his heart and in his love for, for, for our people, but he's not our people, homie. He a Puerto Rican or a Cuban. He ain't nigga. He ain't fully black. He ain't, no, man. Everything in his family lights. I mean, he ain't got no darkness, but he speak against us as if he a part of this. So, uh, no, nah, when I saw he all talk, there's no way I'll continue to connect myself with him. No, nobody that's all talk on the internet and, and, and they're nothing in, in, in real life. I don't believe they have a, a, a position to challenge me, homie. I don't, have the, I don't think they have a position to debate me from. When, when, if I get serious, if I get serious and quit bullshitting on the internet and put the character away and, and just brought Charleston to the internet, homie, couldn't nobody, they couldn't debate me. They couldn't, they couldn't, they can't even speak on me. But Charleston is not for the internet. Charleston give a lot in real life. Charleston run to this internet to do just what everybody else do, escape reality. Mm. Nigga, everybody else on here to escape. So I come here to escape reality, my nigga. And when I get off here, I go back to being Charleston, answering these phone calls, seeing who need, yeah. So uh, Charleston ain't on the internet, and I ain't for to bring Charleston to the internet. I'm going to keep him where he at. He's more of a value where he's at. Your brother was recently uh, released from prison, right? Yeah, after what 31 I, years. 31 years? Yeah. What was that like, uh, him getting I, out? Uh, I was on the road. Uh, I, I was on the road, man, uh, when, when he was released. Uh, I've been out since 1998, and, and I haven't been in. 
I haven't been in and out. And I've been watching all my homeboys come home from prison. Uh, it was a relief to see my mother relieved. Uh, uh, he's like a kid, he's like a 17-year-old kid again, homie. He's 48 years old. He left when he was 17 years old. He didn't, he didn't get in no car with a bunch of bunch of guys and, and went and committed this crime. Uh, he went and done it by himself. He followed the guy home and had somebody page him. And when the guy stopped to answer the page at the payphone, my brother jumped out on him and he had a conversation with him and made him lay face down and killed him execution style. My brother didn't have no remorse for that for a long time because the guy had pulled a gun on my brother at a club and made my brother beg for his life in front of everybody. And he didn't kill my brother. He just wanted to embarrass him. He didn't know my brother was a killer in his heart. When my brother was a kid, he wanted to kill somebody. He told me and I went and told my mama. Uh, and he smiled a lot. My brother was the type of person that smiled all the time, but he was dangerous, he'll hurt you. Mm. Uh, so when, when he committed this crime, uh, my mother convinced him to turn himself in. Uh, she felt like police would go kill him. So I, I say that to say all this, uh, he wouldn't go never get out of prison if, if he wouldn't go develop no remorse in his heart. And that's what I tell all the young people. Uh, man, you can't be running around hurting people and not have no empathy and remorse for hurting people. See, I don't give a fuck about being wrong. People say, man, you wrong, Charleston. And my response is, nigga, I don't give a fuck about being right or wrong. Uh, I just don't want to do wrong to people. It's the difference. Yeah, I don't want to do wrong to people, homie. I don't want to wake up and in my heart, I intentionally want to lie to people. That I don't, I don't want to do that. And I don't do it. But there's some people that do. That's, that's what separates good from bad. Wait, when, when he committed that crime, did he tell you what he did at I that was time? Al I was already gone for murder. Okay. Yeah, I was gone before him. See, my brother, he was always in trouble. But I was, I was worse. And, and they didn't figure that out till later. Uh, yeah, no, nah, man, I was way worse. Because I was trying to walk in his shoes. Uh, and so I got to fly up under the radar, but y'all, I, I was way worse. Uh, that's why I remind people, I man, you got to think, I spent my whole teenage life in, in the boys' home from 1991 to 1998 with children who committed the worst crimes, all violent offenders. You can't find one soul. One soul that's gonna say, yeah, man, he was getting punked in there. Oh, uh, I've never been to prison. And when you talk to my brother, uh, you would think I'm a legend in prison. All the people that say my name and speak on me because of how, how I represent it. What's that noise? Uh, how, how I represent it uh, in, in the boys' home. And, 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 and that's just trying to be gangster. Whatever we thought a gangster was, that's what we was trying to become. Uh, my brother never wanted to be gangster. I don't know what wrong with that nigga. So, so 31 years, uh, he gray haired now. Uh, ball spot in his head, glasses. He went in at 17, 31 years, homie. And he never thought he would get out of prison. My most proudest moment is how my brother been in prison 31 years and I ain't never heard one rumor about him being with a man. I've never heard one rumor. The joy is, is, is coming and watching him and my mother uh, be, be mother and son again. So like I told him the other day, uh, nigga, I ain't watching you. I'm watching mama. Cause she gonna treat you like a 17 year old all over again. It's only natural that she pick up where y'all left off. Uh, so I'm, I'm watching mama. I start 
So that's what you do when a nigga get out of prison that's been gone that long. You sit back and you just watch him for one year. You sit back and you watch him for one year. And that'll tell you what they really want to do. So since he been home, man, he been, he, he done already enrolled in Barber College. Uh, he write on them classes. So he got everything set up uh, for him to succeed uh, in life. He got, a, he got a YouTube channel that's gonna grow overnight if he learn how to work the phones. Uh, he on house arrest for a year on a leg monitor for a whole year. So we got a year to develop content, learn the internet. Uh, I told him, nobody's telling the truth about prison out here. Everybody's sugarcoating prison, the inhumane conditions. They're more talking about the gang fights. They ain't talking about how guards kill. So I told my brother, whoever comes out from prison and come tell the truth, they go get rich that first year. Mm. Just come tell the truth. Don't try to glorify. Don't try to add nothing to it. Man, you just come, come tell the truth. Uh, he got 31 years of truth that he can tell that'll make him rich in two years. Society has changed so much now. I mean, yeah. shit, over the last 10 years, I mean, we don't even listen to CDs no more. You know, everything is streamed in YouTube now. What's the hardest thing your, your brother seems like he has to adjust to? Oh, uh, he's in the house, so I, I, I don't, I, technology. He spent two hours trying to enroll into a, a anger management class mm. because they giving him the instructions. Right. How can you follow instructions to something you know nothing about? They tell you what to do, but man, he don't even, he looking at this phone, even the instructions can't help him with this phone. Oh, uh, somebody got to show him. So he's struggling with, 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 with technology. Uh, he got a fire stick. So he going back to watch movies he ain't never even seen before from the 90s. Damn. He got fire stick. Yeah, he, he is, he's overwhelmed. So I see why they have to put him on a leg monitor. They have to put him on, they have to go to a halfway house. Homie, you can't just release nobody back out into society after 20 years, homie. Think these people go farewell. So he got a good support system, got a good parole officer. Uh, the person that's, that's over his, his, his GPS monitoring, they understand. Uh, the parole officer got to have patience. Uh, the family got to have patience. Uh, understanding. They got to be trying to seek to understand. Uh, yeah, I told my mama, yeah, yeah, she, he got to, yeah. Man, we all got to relearn each other. What was that first conversation like when you uh, seen him in person? Uh, that first conversation, uh, shit, nigga, you finally out here. Yeah, whatever you want to do, you can do it. Yeah, whatever you want to do, nigga, you can do it. Uh, but right now, nigga, you 17 again with your mama again. Don't be in a rush to get no job. Uh, don't be in no rush to do nothing, nigga, but try to figure out where you belong at out here. And it, you got to find you. Nigga been gone that long, homie. He can't come out here trying to do nothing but just figure out how to think on this side. So it's gonna be, it's new emotions, it's new thoughts. Uh, you gotta process out, you gotta be able to, you gotta be able to secure that as, as, as identity. Uh, as you, you know what I see him as? Like a little puppy that was just born, that just came to a new family, that don't know the rules of, he, man, he don't know, because he's so afraid to go back. He's so afraid to make a mistake. And so at, at times that becomes overwhelming. Uh, uh, waking up, man, uh, and your mama's standing in your room. You don't know if you're dreaming or not. Uh, so what I noticed is my, my mother have uh, positive words written all over his room and on the wall. So everywhere it look, it, it's positive things that are, that are seeping to his mind. Uh, mm -hmm. They still have to open the gates out here in their mind. So it's still, a, it's still a mental compartment that got him locked up. So it ain't open yet. Normally when that opens, that's when most of them go to, you know, doing whatever they want to do for his desires and, and, and aspirations. Uh, but right now he's still being controlled. Hmm. Yeah, he's still being controlled. I'm, seeing what you did for Dewberry, uh, you know, Dewberry has a fan base now. I know everybody wants to hear your brother's story. Like the sky is the limit. Like Man, you said, got, if he if he wants, he could take it as far as he wants to take it. He got Big Pistol Gordon done already called. 
Uh, it's a whole lot of people that have heard him speaking in the background uh, in one of my videos and, and, and want to interview him. Uh, he, he, he got a lot of people waiting to hear for him. So I, I'm telling him, man, just learn the Internet. Uh, all your prison friends, man, all y'all done that time. It's, it's a whole market in a, in a genre for y'all. See, when you got these other guys, they're, they're telling prison from a bravado story. And I heard my brother say something real unique. He said, man, most people who went through that and really had to do that, they don't talk about it in a good light. They don't, men, niggas that really had to stab somebody. Uh, that's why when I watched the Vlad TV interview with Blue Boy, there was a segment where he cried. Hmm. Broke down, homie. Uh, you don't get that in these other guys telling these prison stories. I ain't seen a tear drop from a nigga eye yet. And they talking about how inhumane it is down there. I ain't seen, you see, you see what I'm saying? So nobody's taking themselves there to bear that truth. Oh, uh, so I, I, I'm gonna tap into him, man, because I, I, like I told him, uh, these are the new movies, these are the new Netflix, these are the new power stories that, that, that BMF, them, these are the new stories that we can tap into uh, and put on Tubi. Uh, so I'm telling him, man, learn, learn, learn that, learn that phone and then use this whole year to c create content. And I promise him, nigga, by the end of this year, he going to touch over two hundred thousand dollars. QC recently sold their assets, the music catalog for three hundred million dollars. Um, a lot of mixed reviews, a lot of mixed emotions about that. A lot of people feel like they sold it. They sold out. They sold it for for not enough money. Um, then a lot of people felt like it was smart. You know, get in, sell your company, start another one. Nah, uh, Sony Sony never sold. Uh, Warner Brothers never sold. Disney never sold. Why black people are always selling? We don't have no more bad boys. We don't have no more Motown records. No more Barry Gordy's, no more Master P's, no more P's. All of that is gone. So all we aspire to be is an artist. All we aspire to be is an artist. So uh, I have mixed feelings. When I first heard it and saw it, my first response was, oh, man, he sold the niggas to the white boy. Yeah, I seen that. And, 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 and the white boy history, he fucked over Taylor Swift. Yep, uh, Scooter Bronze. Man, the white boy ain't got no good history of doing right by people. Why we keep selling our people to them people? Man, we gonna make way more than 300 million, but we ain't got 300 million right now. But if me and this nigga go split 200, we get 100. So I ain't thinking for the artists. Uh, I ain't thinking, so uh, that's why I'm saying, man, it ain't no more us. You, you, gotta, you gotta build, with, well, man, like minds and like hearts. Uh, I would have never sold it for three hundred million. See, what a lot of people think, and, and, and me being in the music business, the music game is in a weird place right now. Um, QC, they have Lil Baby, they got Migos, they got a lot of, a lot of superstars, but they haven't had a new superstar as of late. Um, so, if if they would have did this a year or or two later, they probably would only got two hundred million. Well, let me, let, let me just say this. What if you keep it? Do you, are, are you not going to make a hundred million? What, it what, wouldn't, what, what, it what, probably what, wouldn't have peaked at 300 million. That's what I'm saying. It probably would have been well, lower than 300. Well, man, you still got, you still got the, the Migos and, 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 man, Man, they could have done. They got a little baby. They got a. They got a few artists that's doing their thing. But man, let me just say this: far as the history of entertainment, when have it ever been right and fair to black people? Never. Never. So why would you sell our cattle? Why? We believe they done killed Michael Jackson. We believe they done killed Prince. We believe they done killed Whitney Houston. Why give our people? Why? If we, if we, we, so I'm saying, if, if, why not just build ours and just have it for us? Yeah. We don't got nothing, man. We don't even own the Martin Luther King statue. 
That Smithsonian Museum, white people build it. Man, we don't have nothing just for us. So God damn, man. We, we ain't got no more Negro League baseball. We ain't got nothing just for us. We ain't got a wrestling. Man, we ain't got nothing. Nothing. Where the Barry Gord is at? What happened to the Master P's running the No Limits? Where they go? We don't, we don't get no buy-in into the music world. We all have to come in as workers. Justin Bieber's catalog was 200 million by himself. QC's all together, 300 million. Justin Bieber, and I know Justin Bieber's superstar, international, hits on hits on hits. He's been doing it for a long time. But his was damn near three fourths of the QC deal by himself. Is it cause he's a white? Is he is his cause he white? Maybe so. Ain't no maybe nothing. We all know it's cause he's white. Everything white is better than black when we're dealing with them. That's true. But the the hits, Justin Bieber's the 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 size of his hits were way bigger than Lil Baby's amigos. Man, uh the death of the death of one of the amigos makes their catalogs. Absolute. I agree. I agree. Just the death of one of the amigos makes their catalog. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, we ain't even thinking about God forbid the death of a little baby, whether he's 50, 60, 70, or 30. What that catalog going to be? And this kid ain't done yet. But what if they stifle this kid? What if they stifle these people? What if they, in the future, take, the, take these albums and, 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 and make them white people? Because they own the rights to them. Like on the five heartbeats. What if in the future the Migos is, is a, a group of three white guys? Or three Spanish guys? <laughs> You see what I'm saying, homie? We don't own nothing. And we just gave up some more shit that we don't own. So uh, I say get the money, but at what expense? I've, I've been seeing you do interviews everywhere, uh, and I love them. Um, from the academics to the Antonio, Antonio, uh, what's uh, his last name? Antoine Daniels. Antoine Daniels, my, my bad. Love, love those interviews. But I haven't seen you do a Vlad in a long time. What's what's going on with the Vlad Charleston White? Uh, Vlad reached out to me last year, probably a month before the Boosie incident, and was excited about doing an interview. After the Boosie incident, I ain't heard back from Vlad. Mm. That is his biggest guess. So, well, one of his biggest guess. In Vlad, in, in, in Vlad, always trying to Jew a nigga. Vlad don't want to pay. But he paid me. But I'm saying, say, man, you already know what I'm going to generate, Vlad. That little old two, 3,000 you would give, you got to come on down with it now. He don't want to come on with it. Yeah, yeah, he don't want to come on with it. So, yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's what that is. So you, you feel as though he picked Boosie over you type it, of? It was very clearly because when, he, when, we, when we was communicating, it was a lot of excitement about a new interview. But remember, Boosie came out and said, whoever interviewed Charles and put these people on the plaque, you really going against, you know, so he made that clear. Uh, so, uh, I ain't mad. Yeah, yeah, I ain't mad. Yeah, he, he, he picked Boosie. It was very clear because uh, I never heard back from him. And, and we was in, you know, talks and communication. Damn. And his loss, not mine. Mm. Yeah, his loss, not mine. What if he reaches out again? Is I, I ain't mad at him. I still fuck with him. That's yeah, real. He, That's real. That's real. And I love that you you don't take this shit personal. No. Oh, man, he ain't done nothing to me. Oh. I ain't done nothing to him. Me and T.I. really ain't done nothing to each other, homie. Oh, me and Boosie ain't done nothing to each other. For us to have these kind of feelings where uh, the niggas who watching my videos saying, man, I hate that bitch. Homie, I ain't done nothing to you to feel like that. Hmm. Oh, uh, so I ain't none of this personal, homie. I come 
to entertain. I come to, to the internet to entertain, be entertained, and monetize. And that's what I was trying to explain to this guy in Phoenix when I was at Super Bowl. You know, people people have their things to say, and I'm like, Charleston White is playing on y'all, like you like to say. This shit is a game, and he's playing the game while y'all niggas mad and y'all frowning y'all faces. He's playing the game, and he's making money. Yeah, that's I, I'm I'm I, I, I'm saying, man, I'm playing, homie. That's why they say, man, he seem like a hypocrite. Half the shit you see, I talk about. Man, I'm not trying to show you I care. These are just good talking points for platforms. Uh, can you box me into a serious conversation where I give you a, a serious answer of Charleston? Of course. But even then, nigga, I'm on her bullshitting. Yeah, we're going to have great dialogue, and you can see the intellectual side of Charleston. Man, I'm still bullshitting. No matter how real I sound. I'm still bullshitting. I don't do wrong in, in, in real life, homie. So in my mind, I'm a good person in real life. I come online to play a villain, to be a bad guy. Or uh, because I know that's what sells. Every movie have to have a good guy and a bad guy. Uh, I permanently play the bad guy online. That's the whole role. In real life, they say, oh man, that nigga OG kind heart. Yeah, that nigga just playing. So, uh, I'm effective in, in what I'm doing, obviously, because people are stuck on this persona and, and this character uh, that I portray and display so well. Uh, I done the Michael Sean uh, uh, interview yesterday uh, on, on the CW33 channel on the network. He was amazed how calm and relaxed I was. I said, no, nah, man, this is me. Yeah, so he was just kind of watching me like, and he said, nah, man, I'm really surprised that you just laid back and calm. I said, nah, this is me, man. I'm really, I'm bullshitting online. But uh, part of, that was part of my strategy. The, the character gave me a defense mechanism. Uh, most people won't approach me if they're not serious about a, a booking, if they're not serious, because the character uh, kind of keeps them at a distance. It, it makes them approach me cautiously. So I learned that that's a defense mechanism. So if you approach me and you ask me some questions, then I'm telling myself, well, this motherfucker gotta be serious because they know what kind of character I play online. So if they done seen past the character. So the people that can see past the character, uh, man, I've, de I've, I've developed seems like going to be lifelong bonds with. A few days ago, you went on a crazy rant about Jay Prince. I'm um, sitting in the car, went all over the internet. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, uh, it's a few bloggers that came out saying that he wanted to have a sit down with you. Is that, is that true? Yeah, 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 yeah. Some people reached out to my manager. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, you know, uh, yeah, you want to have one, but I don't want to sit down with no nigga. You said, wait, you said that if you do sit down with him, you got to have the FBI with you. Oh, uh, I ain't sitting down with no nigga. I was just bullshitting saying that, so don't take that serious. Oh, uh, homie, I'm a grown motherfucking man. What the fuck I look like sitting down with Jay Prince? What I look like sitting down with a man because he done called me. Hey, man, I want to have a sit down. Nigga, I'm a grown motherfucking man. I ain't sitting down with now, motherfucker. Nigga, can't no man tell me shit. I don't listen to nobody. If you don't like what I said, and this go for James Prince and any motherfucking body. If you don't like what I say, hit me in the mouth or kill me. Or then that leave me the fuck alone, nigga. James Prince can't tell me shit, nigga. Fuck, I'm going to go because he, hey man, James Prince. Nigga, fuck James Prince. And whatever nigga want to sit down and think, I ain't got no motherfucking daddy, nigga. But if my mama calls, say, son, let's sit down and talk. Yes, ma'am, mama, I'll be over there in a minute. Hmm. If my bro called and said, I need to sit down and talk, we're going to sit down and talk. I want to sit down and talk to now swinging, dick, hairy leg, funk ass nigga. <laughs> they go for Jane Prince or the president, nigga. Only person I listen to is a judge, a probation officer, and the goddamn police officer putting the handcuffs on me. Want to hear shit from no nigga? Nigga, you can't talk to me. You can't give me no talking to. Hit me in the mouth. 
Because I thought if you don't like what a nigga say, you hit him in his goddamn mouth. I ain't been hit in the mouth yet. Or kill me. Nigga, I ain't shedding up for shit. So no, 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 no. He got the wrong nigga. No, no, he got the wrong nigga, Sean. Now I don't want yeah. this now, motherfucker. Fuck him. Yeah, he he did an interview with uh Gilly, Gilly and Wallow. And um a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people were upset with that, you know, offsetting them still they're grieving. Um and uh, and uh, Who a lot is of people James f- Prince, homie? For people to be upset about what he's saying. I'm saying fuck James Prince. Fuck James Prince Jr. Fuck rap a lot. They ain't number bullies. A bunch of goddamn bullies, nigga. So fuck them niggas. I'm one little bitty nigga. And I'm saying fuck James Prince. Who give a fuck about his opinion? Nigga, talk to these weak ass sons of yours. But we don't want to hear from you. We ain't had no daddy. We ain't had no granddaddy. Fuck a rap a lot records music owner. He's a music label. He ain't no fucking mob boss. So I'm saying, nigga, if you want to talk to me, let's talk to me with the police, the FBI, because I would love to put y'all in jail. I ain't the kind of nigga you can talk to. I'm the kind of nigga you got to kill. And, and, and not to misquote you, you 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 said that him being on the internet kind of messed up his mystique, his it did. legacy. It killed it. I used to, I mean, I had, I got a lot. I had, listen, I used to have a, the utmost respect for James Prince. Nigga, he was up there with. Nigga, he was past Dr. King in my eye. I saw him as a real boss, a strong nigga. But I know a lot of old, strong niggas. They don't talk. They don't talk. They don't give explanations. They don't give reasons for nothing. So once he got on the internet and went to talking, same with Boosie. Once Boosie went to talking, how many flowers go to showing? Nigga, these nigga weak. So once he got on the internet talking, homie, but let's listen to what he's doing, homie. He's talking during an open murder investigation. Giving information about this. Giving names in an open murder investigation. Y'all don't see nothing wrong with that? They are putting niggas in jail for claiming games. YSL is in jail on RICO conspiracy charges because they are game, let alone the mob. So these guys have branded themselves not as a record Label, but as a mafia, a mob, where shootings take place around these guys. Deaths take place. Why ain't none of these mob niggas in jail under a RICO then? And they online, talking on open murder charges as mob bosses. Somebody lying, and I think it's them. They ain't no motherfucking mob. And I ain't sitting down with now a motherfucker that want to call me, that uphold gangster rules. I'm a nigga that'll call the police. What the fuck I'm going to sit down with a mob boss for that uphold no snitching? Don't make sense. He sound like an oxymoron, or I would be a fool. I have no respect for rap a lot records. I have no respect for James Prince's sons. I have no respect for James Prince. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I don't respect nobody that won't call the police. I ain't got no respect for a motherfucker who won't call the police. Fuck them niggas. Fuck James Prince. Fuck rap a lot. Fuck all the gangsters. Because they ain't gangster with that white boy. That cracker. That peckerwood. That pink toe motherfucker. Let alone that Jew, that Asian. So fuck them niggas and everything they stand for. So now I ain't sitting with that motherfucker. Fuck him. I interviewed Batman Capo the other day. And uh, he pretty much revealed that he, 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 he pays for, you know, to have his way. <laughs> Uh, he he revealed that he paid up to twelve thousand. Uh, 
he claims it's not tricking. The women, the women want the money. Uh, he wants the, he wants the, you know, the, the pleasure. It saves a lot of time. Do you have children? Do we have children? I think he has four or five kids. Uh, he should be getting that to an, an allowance. I would much rather give my kids that $12,000 nigga than pay $12,000 for a night of pleasure. I don't love my dick that much. I don't love pleasure that much to get nobody $12,000, nigga. And all I get is a nut. That's a sucker to me. I don't care how much money you got, nigga, you a sucker. If you giving away that money for some pussy. Women don't respect tricks in no shape, form, or fashion. I don't give a damn how much money you give them. She would never have no respect for you as a man. I don't watch the good dick nigga not give nothing and get everything. Man, I don't watch the good dick nigga fuck his way to the top. Stingy, stealing, lying, doing every goddamn thing, not giving nothing but good dick. <laughs> it's called good dick nigga benefits. The nigga with the good dick got benefits. If he, if a nigga with good dick, he ain't never got to get nobody twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> never. That's a nigga got to go get his belly done, get his ass shaped up by the doctor, get his eyebrows arched. <laughs> nigga ain't got no dead skin on the heel of his feet. Boy, back my feet ugly in the motherfucker. <laughs> no, no, no. That's a nigga who lose his side teeth and got to go get it replaced. Man, a nigga that got good dick and let his hair get bald in the middle. He can do everything but lose them two front teeth. Now, if he lose them two front teeth, won't nobody fuck him. But all them side teeth and them back teeth, he didn't even have bad breath. She just won't <laughs> fuck a dog style. He can't fuck missionary. But no, nah, man, nigga getting $12,000, he should be ashamed. No, nah, no, nah, homie, a player would never confess or profess to giving that kind of money. No, no, no. I come, I come from the every nigga conversation, talking up on it, the hunting, the macking. No, nah, man, I don't, I don't, nigga, no, nah, time is money. Man, that money way more important than that time. Twelve thousand dollar man, way more important than this little time. I don't want to fuck that bad. Well, he said it, it wasn't twelve thousand every time. On average, it's two, three thousand. Man, if I twelve give is you the most. Twelve if is I the give most. You two thousand the first time, and we fuck, and we fucking good. That mean you, man. I'm going down on the money. Cause guess this is what I'm saying. <laughs> Bitch, I'm finna give you two, three thousand dollars. And I'm for the fuck you. And you get the comb. You get the money and you get the comb. I lose. You winning like you get the money and you get the comb like a motherfucker. You got to get shouted somewhere. I'd rather shout you on the money than shout you on the dick. Cause I know once I keep giving you this dick, I can go to being sorry. Man, when that man, listen, a nigga that's keep going to go fuck, he ain't got to keep paying. Unless that's the arrangements from the get-go. So this is what I tell young niggas all the time. However you start out with a woman, nigga, that's how you got to keep going. So if you Most start definitely. out tricking, you can't yeah. stop tricking in the middle because y'all like each other and y'all got definitely. fitting for each other. So now, nigga, most hoes are fucked for free off the print. But like I said, he went and got his belly done. So he got to pay. He should have got that dick pump. He wouldn't have had to pay 12000 if so, he would have so got that dick pump, I promise you, he would have deceased and stopped paying. But he went and spent his money on the wrong area of his body. Pumped his goddamn belly. Man, they crazy in the motherfucker. And he pumping money out. Man, they crazy. So what do you call it? Is this tricking, simping? What do you, what do you call this? Oh, uh, everybody know that's tricking. Oh, uh, tricking and simping is two different things. Uh, tricking is paying for pussy. Ain't no way around it. Ain't no... It ain't tricking if you got it. It's tricking if you buying pussy. If the arrangement is, I give you this money, you give me some pussy. Every time I see you, we have some engagement, and you got you tricking, nigga. And that ought not to feel good. Damn. It's a dick shortage. Think about this. More women are born per man, per boys, especially in the black community. Hmm. Man, if he really could lift weights, <laughs> if, if, if he really could lift weights like he look cause he look like he lift weights but he don't he just a blowed up nigga you know like the king dog <laughs> if he really lift weights if that nigga really lift weights and went in the weight room with that kind of body the nigga could fuck for free pulling up in that motherfucking car he drive with all that jewelry yeah man your boy need to go in that gym and put him a, a, a wife beat on and leave them drawers on the dresser. 
and put them gray sweatpants on and go out there and work out with that body. He got the body they want to see. But, man, I'm telling you, man, if you got, at the end of the day, homie, most women just won't be fucked good. They don't want to be well taken care of. Damn, that's real. At the end of the day, homie, Damn. you you can shove out all the money in the world. But, boy, if you can't shove out that dick that they like, your ass in trouble. A lot of people with money on the internet, like I noticed a lot of rappers agreed with them. I noticed a lot of people who was having their way financially, they agreed with Ben Man. But a lot of people outside of that, a lot of the average people, they disagree with Ben Man. Oh, uh, say homie, oh, uh, it's the pool boy that get to fuck his woman while he out. You see what I'm saying? Oh, uh, while she come get the money from you, man, it's another nigga I ain't giving her nothing. Mm. Banging her head up against the headboard and telling her to shut up, bitch. Yeah, mistreating her. Treating her like shit. So I always remember that guy while you over her sucking her toe or drinking whatever drip out her pussy when you suck her pussy or eating whatever you eat out her ass or when you give her all that money, just know it's a no good, low down, dirty line motherfucker that break a heart, don't give her nothing but good dick and heartache. So just remember, I must be the one causing the heartache, <laughs> then the one providing all the pleasure. <clears throat> Y'all heard it here first. It's always somebody else. The nigga that make her cry get more anyway. Mm. Yeah, the nigga that make her cry get way more than the nigga that make her smile. Uh, the NBA, they find this new, uh, his name is Cam Thomas. He just joined the league. He's going crazy. But in an interview, in a post-game interview, he said no homo. They find him $40,000 for saying no homo in an interview. You know, that's like street slang. You know what yeah. I'm saying? By saying, try, you know, by saying you're not gay. Yeah. Um, you know, people say pause and no homo and things, and things of that sort. He got fined forty thousand dollars. Yeah, he lost his free speech. He, they are it, uh, Americans need to start to slowly see that they are losing their constitutional rights, let alone they God given alienated rights. How hey, how they go find a nigga and they and they see? Uh, because they want everybody to be homo, I guess. Uh, if I were him, I would quit playing basketball. I'm just lying. I quit saying no homo. He, I just quit saying no homo. I wouldn't say it again. That's it. Uh, you got to do what them people say do, boy. You hear me? They giving you money. They got you on their television. They letting you squeak your tennis shoes up and down their court. You wearing their jersey that they let you put your name. They put your name on their jersey because when you get through playing, they take their jersey back with your name on it and hang it somewhere. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. We keep coming in as a slave. So we ain't got no say-so. We ain't got no say-so. Uh, you can't say no homo no more. And, and, and just for the record, and just for the safety of, of this video, you make sure you edit this shit where we say no homo. Uh, uh, well, I guess ain't no more gay bashing. Yeah, I guess yeah, ain't man. no more gay bashing. And, and, and he's a rookie. Well, I, I believe he's in his first, he may be a rookie, maybe a second year, but- uh, If I were him, I would become the no homo rookie. Yeah, yeah, I would be the no homo rookie. Uh, every so often, I would say no homo and make it just find him for nothing. But that's what I'm trying to tell you. That $40,000 is going to hit him because he's in a rookie contract. He's in his first contract. You're not really getting millions like that. Yeah. He better apologize and, and, and play gay for a few years. <laughs> yeah, what he better do. He better play gay for a few years and then change his mind because you already got your right to change your mind. According to them, I can be a man today, a woman tomorrow, and then I can be neutral the next day. So I can be gender neutral. I can be gender fluid. Uh, boy, they just wait. Yeah, they just wait till I get a little bit more money. I'm going to start saying I'm a woman and standing up pissing in the woman's bathroom with my pants around my ankles like we used to pee in elementary with that dick hanging like a motherfucker. I'm a woman today, pissing like a motherfucker. I'm a woman. Can't nobody say nothing. Yo. Speaking of that, how, how does it feel talking to Allen Iverson? You're doing interviews with Pat Bev. Oh, like, man. Uh, Y'all go trip out, homie. I had no idea who Pat Bev was. Man. I don't watch he's, sports. He's a household name in the league. Listen to me, homie. I didn't know until after the show. 
I didn't know who her, hey, uh, the nigga was so laid back and cool. Nigga, I didn't know that nigga was a basketball player for the Lakers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I ain't know that, man. So it wasn't until yeah. afterwards people started calling us to say, man, you done. I said, man, I ain't have no idea. Nigga, now uh, I'm infatuated in awe now. Because mm. the nigga was so laid back and, and so cool and player. He's, uh, a shit talk, he's a shit talker like you. That's what they said. Yeah, that's what they said. That's that what everybody been telling me. Uh, homie, I don't know not one name in the NBA other than maybe Chris Paul. LeBron uh, James. LeBron you James. know a few of them. You know, Kevin maybe, Durant. But maybe I, I couldn't count past 10. So I, I don't know these guys. Uh, yeah, I, I was real excited afterwards. But, you know, I was, I was in awe uh, that, that, that I got invited to be on a sports, a sports show uh, with a major name uh, uh, like this guy. Uh, and, and my message, to, to a certain degree, uh, resonates with him. Not that he agrees with it, uh, but it, it resonates with him. When I got to Philly, uh, most people would have you to believe that, man, I'm going to get killed in Philly. Uh, man, them Philadelphia people love me. Uh, uh, yeah, nah, man, Philly, Philly, uh, I fell in love with Philly. Uh, and, and my first two hours in Philly, uh, I looked around and I told myself, man, I'm going to come here and do some community work, homie. Mm -hmm. I saw the kids walk into the store and they didn't look bright eyed and bushy tail. They wasn't smiling, nigga. They was cautionary walking. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, homie. I can, uh, we, we can clean up the city of Philadelphia uh, without the city's help, uh, without them having to spend any money other than just giving us some trash bags and letting the trash trucks come pick up the trash uh, once yeah. we clean it up. And so, uh, uh, Big Reed, man, shout out to Big Reed. He cool with everybody. You know, he, 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 the, he the street promoter that's still putting flyers up. So I rode around Philly all day long hearing myself on the radio. Wow. Yeah, hearing my, hearing my commercials on the radio, man. Uh, I sat with the mayor of, 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 of Atlantic City, who's from Philly. Yep. Uh, yeah, he already predicted that Philly was going to the Super Bowl. Uh, he already had, had his tickets bought. So when I get the call from Allen Iverson, when Big Reed called Allen Iverson, homie, uh, nigga, I took off running around the hotel with doing the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, nigga, I turned into a kid. Uh, uh, yeah, and so, uh, so me, me and AI, we figured we gonna do some things in the future, homie. Uh, and, and, and I'm, uh, I, I've committed and vowed to come back to Philly and do some community work with the youth, homie. So I, I'm locked in out there in Philly. That's tough, man. I definitely want to be a part of that. Uh, you know, I'm from Philly. My family's from Philly. Yeah. So, uh, that's something, you know, even my cousins couldn't believe it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, they just couldn't believe that when, well, when you were in Philly, it was just like, Man, we want to meet this guy. Like, my aunt's going crazy about you. You know what man, I mean? Man, oh, man, believe it or not, man, between Philly, uh, DC, uh, Atlantic, New Jersey, say, man, uh, you talking about some black love? Yeah. Yeah, homie. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was a little cautious at first, you know. Uh, I'm thinking Philly mad at me. You know, they want to kick my ass out there in Philly. Nah, nigga, it was all, yeah, yeah, nah, homie, just, just to show. Uh, it, it was, now, let me just say this. That was my hardest crowd. I heard a few mm. boo. Boo, snitch. Because, you know, this is, you know, Philly and New Jersey, homie, this is mafia town. I ain't with no snitching yeah. and telling. This ain't, yeah, I, so that, that was my roughest crowd, man. Uh, Damn. Yeah, yeah, that was my roughest crowd. <laughs> now, it's this thing going on with these big red boots. Have you been seeing them? Yep. Yeah, I've been seeing that bullshit. The Mickey Mouse looking shit. Three hundred fifty dollars. Oh, uh, who want to fuck a nigga in them? What woman go see a nigga in them shoes and say, "Ooh, girl, look at that nigga. He, ooh, that nigga look good." Man, that every nigga, every everybody's buying them. Oh, uh, we should we we should unfriend everybody wearing them. Why they buying them? It's just it's just like this Popeye's chicken sandwich. Fuck, they wearing them for? They don't look cool. Oh, uh, how you go? How you go look cool in them motherfucker? Man, how a woman go look fine? We used to see them in them high heels, them motherfuckers stiletto, with that with that figure. Man, go man, wear UGG boots. What happened to UGG? UGG boots? Why this new shit? <laughs> I'm saying, what's so appealing about this shit 
Just making these niggas go get them. Do it get you extra pussy? Do they take off on your rent when you go to the rent office in them shoes? Do your grades? What, what's up with these shoes to all of a sudden to say, hey, y'all, we all going to get these? Are you going to get some? No. Uh, I think they're, you know, the exclusive, the, the, the price range. I feel like people want to be the first to take a picture in them in their, in their area. Uh, they're selling out everywhere. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's why homosexuality was so widely accepted. Because they want to be the new, they want to be the first to do it. It's, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ha, uh, have you gave in yet? I remember, you know, you talk about this often, but you don't wear designer sneakers. Have you gave in yet? Making nah. so much money that you can afford it? Uh, uh, shout out to Giovanni Kicks. He sent me a badass motherfucking pearl uh, 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 of a uh, 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 Michael Jordan tennis shoe called by four five hundred dollars. Oh, I finally got a pair of Yeezys. Giovanni Kick sent me a pair of Yeezys. Bad ass Yeezys. They say cost about 700, they said. I wouldn't dare spend that much. Since I've been wearing them Yeezys, I ain't got no new pussy. I've been wearing them all. I wore them Yeezys for every goddamn day. And now a woman say, hey, did they didn't think I was cuter? So shit, nigga, I put them Michael Jordan tennis shoes on. Didn't nobody compliment me but niggas. Hmm. So I went back to Vans. Yeah, no, nah, man. Oh. Uh, I'm still wearing black people clothes. Shout out to Chico, man. Over there with Tarya in Grand Prairie, cutting her over there off carrier, man. Uh, uh, no, nah, man, I'm still promoting black people stuff. I'm still waiting on the nigga sneakers. I'm holding yeah, on dearly. You know Chad Ochocinco, the wide receiver? Yeah. He just did an interview with Shannon Sharp saying that he saved 83% of his salary by wearing fake jewelry, uh, by being frugal, by uh by flying spirit and the frontier the cheap airlines and because he said that his name was always bigger than any material thing out there he didn't have to wear a certain thing he was him he he was his own brand yeah and he saved so much money that way and probably got way more pussy because instead of because at the end of the day fellas that's what it's all about nigga money and all the women you can get all the women you can attract, or all the women that can stroke your ego, all the women attention you can get. Uh, that's ultimately why a nigga put on that shit. That's ultimately why a nigga brush his hair and go get the hair cut. It ain't, yeah, it feel good, but you don't just want to feel good just to feel good. You want to feel good and a woman look, yeah, that feels better. So uh, that's the dynamic of a man. So I, I, I get it, homie. It's, it's, when I look at Simon Cowell and, and I look at all the people that that, that can afford all, they don't wear them people names on themselves. Hmm. So nigga, if, if Charleston White a hell of a name, why would I be branding Gucci on it? So I, hmm. I, I get it. That's where I'm trying to get to, homie. Man, I'm saving a lot of money uh, not buying clothes. Uh, I, I be looking at myself trying to see, man, where, where am I wasting money? Where, where am I just dry wasting money at? Uh, I don't see it. Hmm. Yeah, because in my mind, uh, everything I do with my money is, is, is to promote the brand, to promote Charles. So even if I'm in a strip club, homie, uh, and, and I give away three, three four, five hundred dollars, uh, in my mind, I'm promoting that brand because the way I gave it away, uh, I wouldn't, I, you know what I'm saying? I come through with a gentleman like behavior. Oh, I ain't, yeah, oh, uh, yes, sir, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, so, yeah, so that word of mouth. So, uh, I, every day I be trying to look, man, where am I fucking off money at? Uh, where, where can I, so, uh, I don't, I, I don't buy name brand clothes. I don't shop a lot. Uh, yeah, I think I'm being responsible at this point. So that's the, that's the path I want to stay on where he at. I'm, I don't never want to wake up, uh, and, and, and nigga, y'all see me in a $2,000 outfit on. Nigga, I be sick going to the polo outlet and that bitch ring up at three, four hundred dollars. I be sick, man. Yeah, I be sick then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, six Memphis police fired and arrested for the death of Tyree Nichols. Uh, the viral video came out. It went all over social media. Uh... And then it kind of died down. It wasn't like the shit we seen in, Min in Minnesota. Because it wasn't five white boys. 
It, it wasn't a narrative that we want as black people. It's not the narrative that the media can really push on us to make us roar up again. They needed five white cops. This was an ideal situation if it was five white cops. But since it was five niggas, everybody's used to niggas killing niggas. Mm. I, I say it like this here. What's the difference between watching them five cops kill that nigga and watching them five niggas kill FBG Duck? What's the difference? Mm. What's the difference? Nothing at all. We didn't get mad when we saw King FBG Duck get killed by five niggas because we are used to it. We expect it. We love it, as a matter of fact. We only get mad if a white police do it. If a white boy killed 10 black people, we won't get mad. I'm gonna say that again. If a white boy killed 10 white people, we won't get mad. But if a police officer kill, if a white police officer kill one black person, we'll get mad. But if one white boy kill 10 black people, we won't get mad. If a black person kill, we won't get mad. If a Mexican, but if one white police officer do it, because we only hate white police. We really don't even hate white people. We just hate white police. Yeah, there were no riots. There was no looting. Um, it was just, we seen it today and it was going tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. How did you feel when you seen the surveillance? Oh, uh, I didn't give a damn. Yeah, yeah, I didn't give a damn. Uh, because I can't get past Tremaine Rice. Mm. I do not care about the police killing a black person in America. It don't bother me for the police to kill a nigga. It bothers me to see the kids killing kids. We sit back all year long and watch the kids kill each other, jump on each other, five on one, three on one, four on one, and never bat an eye. So I do not care about grown folks, grown black people being killed by the police. Uh, I don't have enough care and concern in my heart because I care too much about what's going on with our kids and our babies and how they being affected. Uh, are they wrong? Yeah, they wrong. Uh, and I have a right not to care. And I don't give a damn. And I want that to be heard loud and clear. I don't give a damn about them killing George Floyd, Tyree, Mike Brown, Eric Gardner. I don't give a damn. You know why I love Trayvon Martin? Because he fought back. He fought. He died on top of motherfucker throwing blows. He was a boy. He died on top of motherfucker throwing blows. That's why I fuck with them babies. Them grown niggas dying like cowards. Dying like cowards. We posted you yesterday on Say Cheese. Um, I didn't see it. The day before yesterday. Um, you, were, you, 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 said, you, you said that you got three people from Old Block locked up. They think I'm bullshitting. No, they think I'm playing, Sean. The little niggas have been making threats. I guess they was in, in Atlanta doing whatever they were doing, but they had been making threats online in my inbox. This is what people feel to realize. I am a real community activist, documented and everything. I'm a youth advocate, uh, some say a youth leader, but I'm also a gang specialist. I train uh, probation, county probation departments, probation officers. I've trained parole staff uh, on gang intervention and prevention. Uh, I'm considered a gang interventionist specialist. I do a lot of work and a lot of partnership with local police departments, gang units. Got a lot of gang unit officers who, who I do a lot of work with uh, in, in, in teaching and sharing about the culture and, and gang knowledge and the evolution of today's gangs, right? So when you get online and you threaten me, and you done made these threats, whether it's in my inbox or you do it on a post of a page, someone other than me sees it, right? So when you get arrested and you're in certain places that don't tolerate gang activity like Atlanta, these three guys was arrested for stolen a car, taking the police on a high speed chase. If you notice and you go look, they have a bond for those charges. But because they are self-identified gang members by way of their social media profiles and platforms, OBLOC,
by way of their social media posts on gang phonium, they'll identify gang members. If you commit a crime in Atlanta and you are a gang member, then you got a no bond. So these self-identified gang members making threats on Charleston White, I challenge anybody who know these three individuals, when they call home and ask them if Charleston has any relation to y'all being in jail, I promise you they're going to say yeah. How would I know these three guys? They're way younger than me. How would I know these kids? How would I know them? How would I know, how would I know their name? How would I know to pick them out, out of the billions of people online? How would I know to just pick these three out and they actually in jail? How would I know they in jail? I don't even know these guys. And why would they be in jail for auto theft with no bond? With no bond. Think about that. Quick Flip Vino was in jail with no bond. So, uh, and I'm proud. Let me just say that. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to get a badge. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to get a badge. Yo, update. Update on the original members of Gucci Mane's 1017 label. Pooh Shiesty, locked up. Big Scar, passed away. Fujiano, locked up. Uh, he had he had a name called Roll Boy locked up. Keisha Day, she got dropped. The only one left the remaining from the original Ten Seven Team is Enchanting. She's from your city. Our, our, our local our local lady Miss Enchanting. Where's her music? Why don't we see any music? Where's her videos? Where's her performances? Where's she doing shows? What they doing? What's she doing? You came out saying that uh, Gucci Mane, he lacks leadership. Yeah. Uh, homie, that nigga had an all-star team. That nigga was, that was the new death row. That was the, man, that nigga had a, golly, man. And for all them young niggas to fall, it starts who game, man, he went and got them. He gave us interviews, had them tell us their backstory. Only for all of them to crash, man. Quickly and swiftly. So it has to go to the leadership. In, in my mind, and, and notice what I always say in my mind, because it's my belief that, that a leader, a real leader is, is someone or, or just say a real boss it is someone who focuses on self-improvement, self-improving myself. And while I'm working on self-improving myself, all the people around me is looking because I'm the leader. I, I'm, I, so while they watching me improve, it's going to make them better. As I improve, the things around me improve. When mom and daddy get their life together, the kids get their life together. When grandmom and grandmama get granddad, they get everything up under the head flow at the head. That's, that's, that's natural, homie. The CEO, whatever at the top. So it's, it's obvious, homie, that, uh, man, I'm not finna go get a bunch of young niggas and I'm leading the pack and put them up under my wing and, and put them in a position and I can help them, and all my young niggas fall, I'm gonna go look in the mirror. All my young niggas fail. So uh, that's, that's why I say that. Yeah, uh, the original 1017 has so much potential, man. Like, the way Pooh Shiesty came out, Fujiano, uh, it's sad. Very sad, brother. And, and, and no one's talking. This, man, this, this, these are the things we got to talk about, homie. These are the things we got to talk about. Only, only for one of the artists to die, broke. Now, not that got anything to do with Gucci, but it's a reflection. Yeah. Because if Gucci was a white man, if Gucci them was a white label, we were swerving down. They had this done. This was set up. We'll have yeah. all kind of conspiracy theories behind this. 
Yeah. I don't want to put all the blame on Gucci. Uh, I'm not. He does, he, yeah, he doesn't do drugs. I, I'm not saying. Um, I'm saying leadership, brother. Yeah. This ain't got nothing to do with leadership. You got something to do as, as a black man who's been in this industry who says, this is my label, these are my artists, and I'm bringing them to y'all. He brought them to us, brother. So he said, this got everything to do with him as the, as the head of 1017. Yeah. But we know he ain't the head. His woman is. Mm. We know he ain't running nothing. His woman running everything. Everybody know that? He can't think past her. That's why when everything went wrong, she came out and said, mm. we already know he used to do drugs. So uh, there are some brain elements that slow your brain down when you used to do drugs. Well, you may be a little shaky now. Uh, uh, not that you're not a good person, but maybe you're not a good businessman. Maybe you're not a good record label CEO. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it ain't no more Barry Gordy's. It ain't no more, uh, man, do you know what Motown did to Detroit? Motown had everybody at one time, homie. It built Detroit up because of that. Man, look what Master P did with No Limit. Look what Suge did with Death Row. Diddy did with Bad. What happened to those kind of people with the aspiration? Nigga, I want my own record label. Fuck the white man having it. Nigga, I'm doing 20, 50 million now. Why I need 300 million? I'm, man, I've never been this rich before in my life. Why do I need 500 million? For what? Only not to own nothing as a black person, and I'm in this industry. We got to go back to the barter system, huh? We don't have nothing to barter with. Did you see the Boston Richie interrogation video? Uh, no. Uh-uh. Uh, I asked myself this. Who releasing these videos to us? T 1090 Jake released it. He's a white, he, white so guy. He, he released a lot of them. How he getting them? How is he getting interrogation tapes from the police department. How's he getting this? The media can't get this. The new Channel 8, Channel 8, how is he getting this? And why is it they just giving it to a white man only to come <laughs> destroy black people? This white man got the power to destroy black people and we eating out the palm of his hands because he can come expose our snitches. Mm. He ain't exposing no white folks. Mm -hmm. And they ain't giving him no white interrogation tapes or the bikers <sighs> or the skinheads. Who doing this to us? Mm. Bam. Who? And why is it a white face that sits over the tapes that decides who we see and, and we biting on it? Who is this white boy? And why is he so into black snitches? Why? Why does it matter to this cracker? Why? I hate him and I don't even know him. Don't know nothing about him. Don't know. I just know he'll crack a white boy. And I hate them kind of white folks. A lot of people think he's credible. Well, the shit that he puts out is pretty accurate. But he gets a lot of credit because, for one, he's a, allegedly a blood. He did time in prison. What, so a lot, what of the, a lot of the street guys stamp him because he's been through what, that. Listen, what what state and what 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 state he from? Florida and Boston. Oh, uh, it's no real bloods in Florida. It ain't no real Crips in Florida. That's bullshit. Oh, uh, I think when he went to prison, that's when he got stamped. I don't know. I don't know what's well, that, that, That's what I'm saying. We don't know who he is. I don't care how credible his information is. We don't want to hear from no white boy mm. to come destroy our kind. He destroying number of black people with this credible information that he obviously is getting from the police. How is he getting this information, people? Is what we should be asking ourselves. I don't give a fuck who on the tape telling, nigga. The nigga he told on ain't said number four now, have it? Come on, y'all. How does the nigga he's supposed to told on ain't said nothing before now? How is this white boy 
1098 Jake, who's supposed to be a blood, who spent time in prison. When do white folks and black people get to bond in prison? I don't know no prison that does that. I don't know no prison a white man get to sit and eat with black people. What prison he was at that done that? What kind of weak niggas that accept the white man in like this and let him come shame our niggas? When you get to a certain level in the black world, a white boy can't even walk through the door, nigga, when it get real gangster. What kind of gangsters is sitting with a white boy and they'll prove he's a white boy? He can go be gangster with his white people and we'll talk to him, but he can't be gangster with us. Where them rules go at? I'm going to ask the question again. Who's giving him these, inter how is he getting these interrogation tapes? I don't know. He got to be the police too then. Because you can't have access to that kind of shit and you ain't police. That's what we should be asking ourselves. And why are we so quick to attack everything he trying to destroy? Which is black. So now, Sean, uh, tell somebody to get some background information on him. Tell him to go get some white boys and, and bring us some footage of some white boys. But I'm saying to myself, uh, the nigga he done the crime with, they ain't shaming. They ain't saying nothing, so why we mad? Future, one of the biggest artists in the world. Um, he was signed, well, he signed Boston Richie. And, um, you know, word on the street is he's not standing close to Boston Richie anymore because of that. Uh, black men are dumb and stupid, including future. Uh, homie, when we get to business, street rules don't involve business. Street rules don't involve business. Uh, I see guys trying to pull away from Gunner. I see people saying, homie, y'all, man, that's the fakest shit in the world, man. They talk about, homie, that's the fakest shit in the world. They haven't pulled back from T.I. Mm. They haven't pulled back from Jim Jones. They haven't pulled back from uh, all the people that love Nipsey Hussle to help testify to put Eric Holder in jail. So, they, homie, they so fake with this shit. They so fake. T.I. got on, man, the same. Come on, homie. They so fake with this. T.I. took the stand and cooperated when Falunt got killed. They all cooperated. They were so happy. Wasn't nobody talking street when Nipsey Hussle got killed. Nobody in this industry was talking street when Nipsey Hussle got killed, my nigga. Everybody was hoping the police solve it. That's facts. They was hoping the police solve it. Wasn't nobody talking gangster when Trayvon Martin got killed. So now all of a sudden, ain't nobody talking gangster when George Floyd got killed. Well, nobody said, man, let's get the police. They was hoping the law finally worked. So wh why are these niggas so hypocritical, my nigga? That's why I hate niggas like these niggas, my nigga. I hate these niggas. Boston Richie, Gunner, homie. Gunner wasn't a gangster. You mean to tell me T.I. didn't tell on nobody when he got caught with all them guns, homie? The feds don't operate like that. The feds do not operate like that. So, future, and I love that nigga music, homie. But he a fraud too, my nigga. These niggas pull away from their kids. Mm. Let alone a rapper they done signed. That nigga walk away from his kids, my nigga. All these niggas, homie, is the fakest niggas in the world with all that goddamn money. That's why the niggas at the bottom say, nah, nigga, money don't make you real. We looking up at a bunch of fake-ass, fraud-ass, rich niggas, homie. That's why they can't walk amongst the people. That's why they can't get no pussy without giving nobody no money. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Yo. Nah, my nigga. I'm, I'm, homie, listen. Everybody don't have to be gangster. 
It's all right to be afraid of a life sentence. It's all right, homie, to weigh the costs and benefits of telling and not telling. Do I want to go to prison and be law to my niggas while my mama, my girl, and my kids cry? They the only ones go come see me. My niggas may send me some money, but they ain't gonna send me the emotional support I need. They ain't gonna go check on my mama. So as I'm sitting here weighing this, Do I set the record straight and say, I didn't have nothing to do with this? Do I tell the truth or do I snitch? If I wasn't in this car with y'all committing crimes, I ain't no snitch, people. Future has a street, a really, really, he has a street fan base. He's, he's big, he's, uh, he's mainstream, but he still has a street fan base. Young Scooter, it's a lot of street guys in FBG, uh, Free Band Gang. Uh, Young Scooter spoke out. Bo Scooter and Boosie had a whole conversation about having a rat tour, and I know they were speaking about Gunna, Boston Richie. Um, but that would put a stain on Future's brand if he was to keep working with Boston Richie. He got because he came from a street background. He got song with Ti. How do they get past Ti? Mm. How do they get past Clifford Harris? Tippy, Tippy Toe. How do you get past tippy toe? Tipping, tapping, toe, tip. How do you get past that boy? Not alone that. All the other guys who have known to cooperate. It's more than just that. What? What's their justification? What's their justification? Homie, they even did the Carvette, Carvette kid like that. What's their justification when snitches are not getting stitches? Nigga, we don't know too many people that told in the BMF case. But a lot of them niggas told too. Mm -hmm. They ain't shame them niggas. They ain't shame now nigga from the BMF case. They done told. So, homie, what's... That's why I say they the new overseers. Nigga, if I'm making money and this nigga making me a lot of money, uh, so what? Nigga, you told. Lil Durk and Lil Baby, they unfollowed uh, Gunna. Uh, Lil Durk told on King Von. That's how, he, that's how he beat his charges. Lil Durk told on King Von. That's how he got his charges beat. What's the difference? What's the difference? And, and I'm saying maybe they should have a rat tour. There's a lot of rats in this country. <laughs> they gonna make a lot of money. It's a great marketing idea. And let me host the motherfucker. <laughs> we have a 911 crime stoppers number where we can call. Uh, let's, 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 let's go rats against gangsters. Mm. Because gangsters ain't killing rats no more. Rats Damn. killing gangsters by without getting them all that time. And while all the gangsters gone, let us rats raise their kids to be rats. Since they don't care enough about their kids to stay in their life, let us raise all their kids to be rats. And put this rat dick in their women and make rat babies. For you know hey, it, look. we got a whole rat nation. FBG Ducks mom started the OnlyFans. Yeah. Oh, that's dust coming out that pussy. <laughs> Yo, you out of pocket, bro. Yeah, dust coming out that pussy. Yeah, she got that pussy, that dust coming out. She got to knock the dust and cobwebs out that pussy before it go to squeaking and dripping water again. Uh, she gonna make some money if she know what to do, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she got to go do some shit over there. But other than that, ain't nobody gonna pay to see her. I think you came out and said, uh, when she announced that, you said it was her friend's fault. Was that you? No, uh, uh, well, you talking about the manager. Uh, yeah. Man, that, that manager nigga robbed up. Uh, yeah, he, man, man, yeah, man, that nigga, yeah, that, that manager nigga robbed up, Tommy. But, uh, Mama Duck ain't got to do OnlyFans. Uh, Mama Duck can have a movie wrote about her son. There's so many options she can do. 
Mama Duck want a only fan. Mama Duck like mm. fuck. She had ten babies. That pussy still hot. See, I done hung with and hang with her. Shit. Yeah, nah, me and Mama Duck like to fuck. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, so she want the only fans. It ain't that she have to have one. The government take care of her. So yeah, nigga, uh, shit, she want that only fan. But she got to know what to do. She think this going over there. Uh, nah, Mama Duck got to go do some shit to get some money out that only fan. And I'm the only one to know what to tell her to do. And I don't want to tell her. I much rather for her to go to public speaking, uh, de developing a script uh, for, for her son's life and putting that into a Netflix series for somebody to beat him to it. So uh, that's the route to go. Uh, but don't nobody want to see no uh, dry pussy. <laughs> Unless uh, she's a squirter. Now, if she's a squirter, I'm subscribing. Yeah, if she over there squirting, I'm going to subscribe like a motherfucker. I promise. King Von uh, allegedly put $50,000 on Duck's head and then raised it to $100,000. Um, this is real official paperwork. Um, somebody from the camp spoke out. This was a whole statement. Uh, and then broke all, gave them all chains, passed out chains to the crew when he, when he died. And what what was your thoughts when you seen that? Uh... That's why I've never liked him. Uh, we saw him give it on video, right? Didn't we see a video of him passing out $100,000, handing out chains? Yep. Didn't he make mockery of the death the day he died? Said they, and, he, and that was a lie? Yep. Uh, we see he was a serial killer. So at this point, someone should be taking that mural down. And all celebrities should stop going to go take pictures and uplifting and admiring King Von. At this point, with this information, unless we go say they lying on him. But he even said he done all this. So at this point, homie, King Von means us no good. As a people, he was a serial killer and took pride in doing this. Only for the entertainment industry to pick his side and not the side of the people he was killing. Homie, they could have stopped a whole lot of killing if they would have signed all of them deals. If, if all of them would have got deals, homie, on both sides, GD, BD, it wouldn't have been so many casualties. Hell no. They would have gave him more money. When these niggas get money, they feel more untouchable. Nah, I'm homie. telling you. Nah, homie. Look, man, look at Dirk and them, homie. They start seeing different. They start, they start getting exposed to different. They leave those conditions. They start to see nigga life is about having fun when you start getting money. But if you, if you ain't getting no money to change the conditions, then yeah, you go do that stupid shit. Yeah, you go do that stupid shit. No more of them niggas with Chicago killing. They got money. All of them to settle down. All of them that end up getting the money, getting the platform, getting the exposure, all of them settle down. It's the ones who ain't got it that's trying to get it that's still if, turning up. I, I agree with you a thousand percent. But if that's the case, Quando Rondo, Young Boy, King Von, it's still shit's still gonna happen when you get to that next level. But, Women, but look at but look ego. But look, homie. King Vaughn was a fluke that got killed. Look how NBA young boy done grew up. Look how Crondo Rondo done, the, the killing stopping. You gotta give them enough to change the conditions. But if you I just give that. them enough to stay in the conditions, yeah, they gonna, yeah, they gonna murder each other. I see where you coming from. Nigga, they, they love the attention in the, in, in the 100,000 views way more than the murder. Yeah, but Money makes people feel untouchable too. Especially Man, when you're listen, young. Money, money make you get smarter. Because when you're when, when when you're when you're at hey, my age, at your age, but listen, get, listen, 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 listen to me. Because this is what would have happened if they would have gave them both sides money. They would have started going on tour, they would have started doing shows. Like like they would have started traveling. Nigga, the one back home, yeah, sending their money back home. 
But even then, they're going to stop sending the money back home because they're going to start having fun. The niggas that's killing ain't having fun. The niggas that's drilling, they ain't having fun. Nigga, once you go to having fun, nigga, all the killers chill out. It's the niggas who ain't having fun. Angry, mad, go shoot up this motherfucking club. But once everybody go to having, homie, didn't you see when everybody had PPP money? Nigga, the killing damn near stopped for a minute. Mm -hmm. The killing damn near stopped for a minute when money was flowing through. Niggas can go do this. Men, the, them niggas were partying, having fun. It's when the money stopped and the fun stopped, they started shooting them guns that they bought when they were having fun. Yeah. So, damn. that's where, homie, most of these niggas shooting and killing to get in front of a camera, whether that's a news camera, a Satie's TV camera. They want people to know, man, if we just go put cameras out in America, homie, and these niggas can go viral and get views, nigga, they'll damn near stop killing. If you put the microphone on this side and say, hey, tell us about this nigga. Okay, tell us about this nigga. That's really all Mo3 wanted. That's all Mo3 wanted, homie. To be heard and seen. And we're willing to throw our lives away just to be seen and heard. We'll go commit a crime, homie, only come on here and rap about it and tell you what we did rather than keeping a secret and don't nobody know we killed nobody. We want people to know we killed somebody. We want people to know we robbed somebody. We want people to know that we scammed. We don't want to get away with scamming. We don't want to get away with murder. We don't want to get away with robbery. We want people to know we done it. That's this generation. And I'm saying we can damn near solve a lot of crime if we get these niggas the attention they want. Speaking of money, Drake. Drake name came up in the XXX murder. Uh, the prosecutor was trying to fight that Drake paid to get XXX killed. For what? Has to be this a motive. A, a little mini rap back and forth they had in 2016, 15, 17, around oh, that time. Oh, for real? They had a beef? It wasn't really a beef. It was like a little... Back, it was a little slugs thrown back and forth. Oh, uh, according to the, the most honest guy out of the crew that's testifying against everybody, they don't even know Drake. When you look at the tape, that was a spontaneous robbery, homie. That was an impromptu robbery that went bad. Oh, uh, Drake ain't the type of person to get nobody killed, homie. That nigga let a nigga pee on him. <laughs> Yeah, that Yo, nigga let nigga pee on him, homie. He ain't gonna try to get nobody killed, my nigga. Cause yeah, Drake, nah. Drake, Drake, Drake was trolling. That nigga killed everything. Drake was trolling and kind of threw little jabs, saying little shit after X died. So people were trying to put two and two together and blame him. But yesterday, the judge said that he didn't have to sit down because Drake was gonna have to sit down in about two weeks at the at the uh the during the trial. It was that big of a deal until yesterday, until the guy came out and said that, nah, we don't know him personally. Yeah, that's a guy part of the crime. Uh, if he's testifying, why wouldn't he be all the way honest? So obviously this guy has to be honest. Uh, yeah. You, man, you can't make me believe. Uh, yeah, no, nah, Drake did that. No, nah, I wouldn't believe that, homie. Uh, I can't see it. Not that he hadn't done it, but... Uh, when you're looking at the evidence that's being presented in the case, uh, when you look at the video, them just three niggas trying to hit a lick, homie. And, and one nigga told because they didn't give him enough money to party like how they party. So, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> yeah, had they gave him three more thousand, he probably would have stayed silent. But then you can't, y'all, we split 50,000, y'all get 20. Yeah, nigga, y'all come back and give me three. Yeah, nigga, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn myself in to tell yeah, they ain't even got to come look for us. Nigga, y'all give me how much? Yeah, I'm finna go turn myself in right now and tell them we did this. Yeah, nah, homie, so, uh, uh, nah, 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 I don't think he did. Now, you tried to give Blueface advice. Yeah. He wasn't, feel, he wasn't feeling it. Uh, he went on Twitter, you know. Called you a crackhead, whatever, whatever he said, a drug addict or whatever. He, he, he wasn't trying to hear. Advice from a rat or a crackhead or something. Yeah, homie, why they think I smoke crack when I was a kid? <laughs> when I was a kid, when crack came out, 
<laughs> yeah, nigga, I was a kid. Hassan Campbell said the same thing today. Like that's the that's the go-to when it comes to you. Oh, uh, nigga, I, I, why they think I think I, crack came out and said in 83, 82. I was born in 77. Fuck, I'm gonna reach for some crack for. Oh, uh, what gives them this notion? Maybe they know some crack addicts. Uh, I don't know none no more. Yeah, I ain't no nigga still selling crack. I thought everything was fentanyl. I thought the crack was fentanyl, the pill was fentanyl. The, I thought everything went to fentanyl now. Ain't no more drugs of what we thought it was the other day. Everything fentanyl. Uh, Blueface need to take advice from anybody that'll give him some good advice. Uh, at this point, he's no longer a rapper. He's a reality TV star who don't rap no more. Uh, who's out on bond for shooting a gun at a club. Who gets abused by a woman on television in real life. Who, who disrespects his mother. Who allows his girlfriend to jump on his mama. Who wait, jumped, wait. How would you handle Krishan? Uh, uh, our donkey cone, like Uncle Wayne said do. You donkey cone. You ever seen Donkey Kong? <laughs> you hit on top of a goddamn head. And it don't leave no bruises. Police come, and she ain't got no black eyes, she ain't got no busted noses, no fat lip. But boy, she got a concussion. Uh, they call it a contusion, a brain contusion. Uh, you hit on side of her head with this part of your fist. Bitch. Rock a motherfucker, rock a Yeah, she leave you alone. <laughs> that's what I mean, Wayne used to do. Do you feel like she's running over him or that's the that's the script? That's part of the script. No, that's that toxic love. No, we watching real toxic love. Oh, uh, when she busts his head open and he let the little bitch vacuum the glass out of his head, I knew they were that was love. Yeah, that's that old Al Green kind of love where you the bitch throw them hot grits on you and permanently burn you. Oh, uh, yeah, the way she act in public, uh, when she get drunk and cry. When that nigga says she been with 10 more other men and, and he still been sleeping with her with no condom. I said, oh yeah, they love each other. That's real love. They're up. Two motherfuckers burn each other. Recycle the STD. That's real love right there. My woman been with 10 other niggas this year and she come tell me, uh, this is my baby. And I said, nah, it ain't my baby. It might not be. I shouldn't say that if I know she's been with other men and I've been sleeping with her with no protection. I got to respect the game and mm. say it's a possibility it might be mine. Uh, so I see a nigga with mama issues. I see a little girl with daddy issues uh, who service a need for one another. That's why they hadn't left each other alone. They meet one another's needs. Uh, no matter how toxic it is, no matter how unhealthy, they meet one another's needs. Might not be good for us. We damn sure know it ain't good for them, but they meet the mm. need. That's why they ain't left one another. Mm. So, uh, she go keep fucking. Uh, he go keep fucking, and the baby go be fucked up. Yeah, the baby go be <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Yo, I got two more for you. Uh, Rilo Rodriguez, uh, popular rapper, signed a little baby. He recently came out saying that. Uh, he spends he spends four thousand dollars a week on lean. That's around two hundred thousand a year. Dope fiend. That's what they spend on crack, nigga. Say homie, the, the motherfucker crack. That's how the crack addict you spend money. That nigga. When did it cool? When did it become cool to be a dope fiend? Getting high every day, all day, nigga. Serve how you like this, homie. Nod. You'll be standing up, leaning on serve. Not only that, nigga, it's in. Constipated. Not, not on top of that. So you drinking all this syrup, all this soda, all this juice. Nigga, your, your bowels go lock up. You can't shit. You ain't putting water the next day on top of that shit like you supposed to. You ain't getting the right kind of fiber. Nigga, your ass go lock up. Your kidneys go shut down. You're going to start getting balls on your skin because you, cause your body, your liver, your kidney not properly filtering. Come on, man. 
when did this shit become cool? And you hey, bragging about it. T it's been cool in Texas for a long time. You know that. But but this is what I'm saying. Texas made it cool to the world. This is what I'm saying, nigga. Not just the lean, all of this shit. When did it become cool to spend thousands of dollars on getting high? And you can pop your collar doing it. I think Lil, that Lil Wayne era, 05, 06, the double cup Lil Wayne, that's when it became cool. That's when it hit. That's when Justin Bieber got caught with all them paints in his house. And that's when they stopped. When Justin Bieber got caught, that's when they like, like the activist was over. All that shit was done. Goddamn right. That's when it hit. Because it, it made national news. It was on TMZ. Yep. It made national. That nigga, that nigga had pints everywhere. He was hanging with Mayweather. He was hanging with all these motherfuckers. He cleaned his act up after that. Yeah. He cleaned his act up after that, homie. He did. So here we are. The young niggas ain't talking to the old niggas. All the old niggas who ship serve, when they go to prison, the young niggas go to prison, all the serve shipping niggas on dialysis. All the serve shipping niggas on dialysis. Ain't nobody telling the young niggas the long term effects. The short term effects, only these niggas can't shit. That's what they ain't telling you. Niggas sip syrup every day, struggling to have a, a regular bowel movement. It's impossible. It locks your bowels up on the soda water, homie. The juice. You don't see them niggas rehydrating because they sipping it every day. So where do they rehydrate it in the process of putting this syrup in their body? Where do they rehydrate? They're not. Man, some of them niggas pissing blood. But it's 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 a oh it's it's a it's worse it's it's an opioid right so it's like heroin, the side effects when you can't get it, the easily agitation, the 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 the, the all of a sudden out of out of control anger you got just because a motherfucker asked you a question because you ain't you ain't leaning. They ain't telling them parts. Nigga just fucking with a numb dick can't even come. On. <laughs> dick just numb. Just man, come on, homie. Dick just numb in the motherfucker. Look, you just fucking. Nah, man, them niggas, come on, homie. Tell the whole truth what come with spending $200,000 on promethazine with codeine. Look at the side effects. Look, the, man, the addiction to a serve, homie, is like a heroin addict. Them niggas shit on they cell. Throw up. Them niggas shit on they cell, homie. During the, during the withdrawals. That's why if the nigga can't get that purple, they go get that red, they get that yellow, they get that green. They got to have, if they can't get that, they got to have that purple shit. They got to have that hydrocodone. All of those are in the same family. Opioids. All those in the same family. So uh, they go learn. I promise they go learn. Because at some point, my nigga, life teaches us all, even in death. At some point, nigga, life teaches us all. Before we get out of here, uh, Dirk and Lil Dirk in India, they had a, a, a real healthy relationship for a long time. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, he he said, happy Valentine's Day to her on Instagram. She wasn't trying to hear it. Uh, he should have did what I did, sent her to a DM. I wish her in a DM. Yeah, and, and she wasn't trying to hear it. She was like, let it go. But he allegedly had a baby on her and hid the baby, allegedly. Um, that's that's the talks in the industry. That's the talk around town. She she's not coming back. She's still going. He probably had another baby with a fat white girl. That's why she probably. I'm, I'm telling. I'm telling you that baby mama he had that baby with don't look nothing like her. He accustomed to them fat white girls, so he'll take that dick somewhere else. Other, uh, he'll take that dick somewhere else other than someone bad as her. What would you do? To get India back, because India was a big part of his brand, you know, oh, she being was? fake. Yeah, she was a big part of his brand as far as him being faithful and the girls liking their, you know, the perfect couple, girls fantasizing and shit like that. What should Dirk do to get India back? If he's listening to this interview right now, what can he do to get India back? Fuck getting her back. 
Nigga, much money you got, you don't give a fuck about no woman leaving you, nigga. Fuck you talking about. Uh, but if you just want to get her back, uh, buy her back. Yeah, buy her back, nigga. You got enough money to say, hey, baby, here go $5 million, $10 million. Oh, baby, let's go get married, and I'm going to give you access to the kingdom. I'm going I'm to give you my last name, baby. And you have access to all this. That's how you get her back. You can't get her back playing boyfriend, and you done had a baby on her. She going to come back and deal with the shame? Because obviously, the bitch you had the baby with probably don't look about, about nothing. And she probably a poor bitch. You don't want to drop that cum off into a poor bitch. Now, now, no, nah, man, so, uh, no, nah, he got to marry her and give her the last name and let her have access to the kingdom. Uh, and then leave her alone. Let her go be. Yeah, and then leave her alone. Let her go be. After having a baby behind their back, man, the girl, the girl, the girl came that. out, the girl came out and said it. That nigga need to go watch Fences with Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington had a baby across town. Guess what he did? He brought the baby home. Here go the baby, baby. <laughs> nigga Denzel brought the baby home. I'm that kind of nigga. Men, women don't leave you by making no motherfucking baby outside to marry. Outside, man, that ain't no man. That ain't, ain't now nigga been left for that. Now, now strong nigga been left because he had a baby over there. They do them weak niggas like that, homie. I promise. It's many niggas that had a baby over there, and, it, and she got to deal with the baby. She'd rather keep the man. He wasn't worth keeping, obviously. Because I done seen some rather keep the man, and they ain't nobody got as much money as this nigga got. Ain't nobody got much money as this nigga got. So it's something to this money shit. <laughs> Bill Gates woman <laughs> left him. It's something to this money shit, man. Money must don't satisfy women. Money can't satisfy women. Because these niggas with money can't keep a bitch. So, uh, I recommend any nigga, homie, uh, to believe in this concept. If a woman like you, and she really like you, it ain't nothing she won't do for you. Or nothing she won't put up with. When she really love you, Homie, she'll damn near go to the doors of hell and knock on the door with you. Now, she might not go in, but nigga, she'll go to the doors with you. I done seen it. With niggas who done had something and niggas who ain't had nothing. It's all on the nigga.